we've canceled the gig. I said, well, that's fine. Just pay me. And he said, uh, no, we we can't pay you. We're we canceling the gig. I said, well, you should have done that shit two weeks ago. Right? <laughs> you know, we're here. We're here, yeah, I yeah. said, I want my money. We walked out on the <laughs> patio, and there were some steel chairs there, and I grabbed one chunked it through his big plate glass window in his bar and god dang then all of a sudden we start hearing sirens just all over chattanooga and we go over there and jump in the truck and the way we come in was way on the other side and then there's a barricade here and my buddy's driving i said just run through it and i got a brand new truck at the time i said oh. we busted right through that shit. Welcome to the X5 Podcast. We are here in Cleveland, Alabama, and our special guest today, actually, we, we Charlie's out today on gender reassignment surgery, so we've got Cassio filling in for him. Hey, I'm Charlie, <laughs> man. You guys are awesome, man. <laughs> and our buddy Al has stepped up to the plate today. Or as we call him, the squatter. The squad, yeah. right? We've got Bert, another co-host here, Bert Wallace here, and we've got Saint Germain, and our producer extraordinaire, Mister Dustin Trey. How you doing, Dustin? I'm doing all right. How you guys doing? We have the pride of Scottsboro, Alabama, today. He's here to clear up a bunch of shit. Okay, you know you the owner a, of Gino's Pizza. That, that you eat, <laughs> you you read a lot of stuff about him on bathroom walls around Alabama. <laughs> Truth, and he's here to clear it up. Everybody, please welcome Mr. John Stone. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> the bad part is you. Yeah, wrote first most thing is threw up. I ain't from Scottsboro, man. <laughs> well, he lives in Nashville now, but I'm from Dogtown, Alabama. Oh, is it? I thought yeah. it was Scottsboro. No, I played Dog in Dogtown. Dogtown. I They'll played make some in furniture up there. Yeah, man. Every Saturday, our uh, our uh, population goes up by an extra 10,000 people. <laughs> <laughs> wow. For what? No Clean shit, market? man. No, for the furniture. furniture people stuff, come yeah. there from all over the South. Oh, no, no look, shit. I'm from Gadsden. I've got many a Dogtown items in my house. <laughs> yeah, no <laughs> shit. Dude, oh, yeah. it's one of the biggest furniture money. stores in the world. Oh, yeah. For real. Well, I'll be over here if y'all need me. I didn't know shit about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's seriously, it's a crossroad, man. And uh, it used to be just a freaking flashing light. Now it's a four way stop. And uh, it's got a gas station, a little dairy hut. They just put in a dollar store, so we Watch are coming up. Now. Watch out. Yeah. We're coming up, Jeez, man. man. And uh, and they got another little restaurant and then Aiken's Furniture. And it, like I said, man, every weekend, there's thousands of people there. Is there? It, oh, they uh, yeah. they go, come from all over the place. Anywhere I go and I tell people I'm from Dalton, oh, the furniture store. Yeah. <laughs> How did you avoid working there? I did. Get, I did at 16. <laughs> I did. I got there and toted furniture and shit upstairs, put it through windows, and man, I was like, screw this shit. I'm going home and practice my guitar playing. <laughs> That'll give you passion about oh, art God right dang, there. So I, I used to build houses, boiler maker, and uh, loading furniture and stuff, all hard work. What kind and, of boilers did you make? Well, I worked in those big <laughs> daggone uh, factories where they they generate their own power. Oh, so they got these steam boilers in their uh, in their uh, their factories, and ever so often, shit would ha need to be replaced, and or you'd have to tear the whole thing out and just put new boiler in. So I did that kind of work. It sucked too. Well, that does mm -hmm. not sound fun. No. It does not. Seven days a week, twelve hours a day. Dude, yeah. this is the this is the guy that has always had his man card. You see a lot of country <laughs> music artists that, that talk shit about bailing hay and all that kind of stuff. I did that shit man, too. Man, he does every bit of the shit. Man, if their butt tour bus breaks down, he'll just go put a new engine in it. Like he uh, knows. It. Did you ever work yeah. at Little Caesars? Because I did. So. <laughs> <laughs> that was at the heat of five dollar hot nights. Hey, I was slinging. Speaking <laughs> speaking of them bus breakers down and fixing it, I was. Going down to, uh, it's a Waldorf uh, hotel in New Orleans. I can't remember the freaking name of it, but uh, it's like an old, like probably Bourbon, or, Bourbon Orleans, like one of those old. No, hotels. but it's it's one of the the fanciest hotels in New Orleans. Sazerac, huh? The Sazerac, yeah, something like that. I don't remember the name, but anyway, <laughs> it's it's a it's a Waldorf hotel. They okay. own it, so uh, we go down there, and I got this them. Uh, uh, Fleetwood Discovery Motorhome at the time, 
And that some it's breaking down every few miles on the way down there. So I got to play a wedding at this hotel. So we pull it. We finally get down there, man, barely in the nick of time. We walk in to the deck uh, lobby there. I'm covered in grease. My dad's covered in grease. We fixed that son bitch all the way down there. Your stage we're, ready. <laughs> we're, and so they didn't want to let us see us. So they called the client and said, hey, there's somebody down here who said they're supposed to be here for y'all. And she said, what does he look like? Big tall guy with uh, <laughs> strawberry blonde hair. They're dirty. She said, yep, that's them. <laughs> <laughs> and to this day, they just went down there. Uh, the people I played for just this recently, they do a, like a teddy bear breakfast around Christmas. You take your kids there and, mm-hmm. and a teddy bear brunch or some shit, and they meet uh, Santa Claus. <laughs> so this guy, there's a black guy that's kind of over their events and shit. And when we did the uh, the wedding, you know, it was this in this beautiful room. I mean, it was one of these weddings where the lady spent like thirty grand just on flowers. Just the flowers were thirty thousand dollars. So he comes and tells us, "Well, we got a room set up for you in the back. Your your band needs to stay back there." I said, "No, that's not going to happen." <laughs> and so we were just a ba- the you know a thorn in his ass the whole time. And so, but he still talks about to this day every time he sees her. Yeah, that that band with the broke down bus. Still, that's the best band's ever played here at this hotel. Ah, yeah, <laughs> right. He told her that shit the, just the other day. They were down there with their kids, man. But we, I got all those broke down bus stories, and yeah, we didn't. We just got out and broke out the toolbox, man, and got to work. <laughs> those buses, man, they'll split up a band. I mean, they oh would cause God. some stress. It was somebody that's willing to spend thirty thousand dollars on flowers, fucking flowers, and then you call them and say, "Hey, man, we're broke down." What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You'll lose a friend for life for that. That's oh man, but it was cool. We got you know, it's it's all you you got bus of shit. You know how that stuff goes. It's always something tearing up. I just got a text five minutes ago that one of our, <laughs> our air compressors out. I mean, I can't even. We're we're off this weekend and our bus is busy breaking down, just being parked. <laughs> That's you know, what they do. If That's you don't run do. them twenty four seven, man, they break down like crazy. I get. I tell people all the time, you got to get on birth control if you're going to buy a bus because they will fuck you to death. And and anytime you get an old vehicle or some shit that some motorhome or a bus that's like, <laughs> oh, it's fifteen years old, but it's only got twenty thousand miles on it. Mm-mm. You fix it, replace mm-hmm. everything on that thing. Every you better belt. get one that's got two hundred fifty thousand miles that right. they just came off <laughs> from the last everything. trip. Because yeah. right. that's some going to been maintained, and they've mm-hmm. already fixed all that shit. Yeah, mine I fixed. I replaced everything from the tires to the roof and the front bumper to the back bumper, everything, and was. Still shit broke on it when I sold it. <laughs> did come, did come pay me 20 grand for it in $20 bills. <laughs> it took me 35 minutes to count that money. <laughs> I'm not lying. He paid me all that 20 grand in $20 bills. Oh, God. <laughs> but that was all legit cash. You know? <laughs> yeah. And they were all folded. <laughs> That's a true story, man. Take us back to when you, when did you start playing music? You said around 16. When you were had that shit job, you were like, I got to start playing music. No, nah, man, I, I was in the military, you know, right out of I high knew that. school. I and so, and then it's the craziest thing. I started picking and grinning a little bit when I was a, uh, just a kid because my daddy was a truck driver and all his buddies played music and sang. They'd get together on the weekends and they'd start on Friday. They'd put some stuff on the grill and they wouldn't quit till Sunday night. And, that one group would be They're just playing for yourself, just uh, sitting around the house court. jamming, man, yeah. and, and at, or at the uh, lake or something. We had yeah. tents set up, and and one group would be getting drunk, passing out. Another group would be waking up, and they'd start playing. And so all the other kids would be out terrorizing the neighborhood, sniffing gas and shit. And I'd be, <laughs> I'd be in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be in there, you know, they'd be out there stealing people's coolers and sniffing gas. And I'd be sitting in there just waiting for somebody to set an instrument down so I could just touch it. Yeah. Really? And first time I ever played an instrument, I was eight years old and they was all jamming. Their drummer didn't show up. And one of the guys said, sit down behind these drums. And every time I do the bass, hit this kick drum and then in between hit the snare and just tap the hi hat like that. So I sat down and played the whole damn night with them. No shit. And I, I did. I've seen you and recently that, play drums. I didn't yeah. know that you But that was the drums. first night you ever played drums? First time first time I've ever played drums was that. And to this day, I've never owned a set of drums, never practiced one second, and I can play these shit out of them. 
<laughs> you I know can. when somebody you, tells you that? You'd be impressed. Yeah. I'm serious. I play the shit out of a set of drums, and I've never owned a set or never practiced one second in my life. I mean, you can have a good ear and for music and stay on beat. Like, you know, I got yeah. rhythm and everything. Still don't mean you can play drums, man. It's a whole, no, whole it, different ball game. For me, it was just natural as breathing sitting down behind the drums. Bass came easy to me, bass guitar. Lead guitar, I still have to really work at that. You know, I'm I'm a pretty good lead guitar player too, but uh, it was – it wasn't just grab it up and start playing. I had to sit down and play, rewind, play, rewind, and just play shit over and over and over. So you had a band by the time you were in high school? No. Uh, how I got in the music business, this is a crazy story too, man. This was just freak. It was fate, I guess. I was walking into a gas station in, in Leesburg, Alabama, and this dude was walking out, and we vaguely knew each other. He was a couple old, years older than me. We didn't go to the same school. He was in a band. And uh, had been in bands since he was teenagers. A bunch of them kids that went to that school had yeah. bands and shit. He just stopped me and said, hey, dude, can you sing? And I said, well, I think I can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to ask me. <laughs> I mean, it's just out of the blue. And uh, and so he said, we're firing our lead singer. Won't you come over tonight and jamming? And if, we, if it goes good, <laughs> we'll go meet the band tomorrow. This was on a Tuesday. I went over there. and This is a total stranger? Well, we're not total strangers, but we're not friends. We don't right. hang out in the same <laughs> circles, but we knew of each other. But I don't know. I mean, I don't know how he knew I could I'm, even sing or even ask me that. Imagine getting fired from lead singing for the dude that just bought a burrito. <laughs> 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 like, we got to get rid of this. Yeah, I know, it sucks to be that guy. <laughs> this no. dude's ordering at the gas station. No, that's we'll fucking funny. <laughs> funny right there. But it's the truth. I mean, that's the goddamn truth. And so I went over there, man, and he liked me on Tuesday, so I went and met the band on Wednesday, and they dug it, and I've been playing music ever since. That's and crazy. That particular group didn't make it out of the rehearsal studio, but a few of them left, and me and a couple other guys put some other dudes in there, and then that's when we went and played our first gig, man, and it just... I've, I've played every weekend. He's never had a then. booking agent, this son of a bitch. Never, had, never a had one. Agent. Where was first gig at? First gig was a place called Seymour's. And it, you know where Foxy's is over by where the old 278 Club oh, is, yeah. that strip joint? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, this, <laughs> I've heard about it. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> I don't know where it's at exactly. I mean, you take well, a right and then go up the hill a little bit, but yeah. <laughs> Seymour's, Seymour's became Foxy's, and they opened it. It was a strip. It was going to be a strip bar, and I was going to go in there and play. And the girls danced, but they didn't get their damn license on the weekend <laughs> I was there. So I went over there and played at this place. And I think they gave us fifty bucks uh, just for gas, and we went and we were fucking terrible. We were so bad he didn't let us finish. Yeah, and so and it was the guy who owned it was the guy who got me into music. <laughs> Wait, the guy at the gas station? No, the guy that I used to a friend of my daddy that I used to play that gave me my first guitar. And he's like, finally, he said, "Man, y'all just." Just be done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just be done. Just be done. At a strip damn. club, dude, I can tell you, no matter how good you would have been that night, you're not going to do shit compared Wait, to titties. It was a know? strip club with no strippers. They, they couldn't still, even strip yet. So what was it? Just a bar? <laughs> well, it was going to be a strip bar, but they didn't get their license to have the girls yet. So was everybody there expecting titties? Well, they that's what the plan you. was. Yeah. So imagine the reception we got. Yeah, they were grumpy going in, and then they're like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Nobody was happy. No, no. <laughs> but that done. was our first gig, man, our first gig out. And then the next gig we got was at the Rockin' Country Club in Chattanooga, which was freaking Out of town? Lit. Your second gig was already second out of town? Second gig, and it was packed. Had three bands a night. Y'all about to two of the shit bands, yourself in fear. Two of the bands were amazing. They had one band that did just all like hair metal shit, Van Halen, you know, Motley Crue, and would blow your mind. They we were just would sit there and then we had to go up after? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are y'all playing? We sucked. We were totally country. What's your best song then? At that time. Then? Yeah, oh, what was your shit. banger? What was your closer? I'd be better off. Mark Colley <laughs> song. By, oh, Mark Colley. Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> oh, that man. was That song right there, man, when I was younger in my early 20s, if I did a talent show or anything, I'd do that. And 
It was kind of a bluesy thing, like, shame, 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 shame. Yeah. Yeah. And goddamn, I get up on the tables and dance. I, I throwed it killing on, it. son. I killed it. At least I thought I did. I thought I was killing it at the time. But I, I was it terrible. I was terrible. But we were, we were so bad at this club, the other bands complained constantly, why the fuck do y'all got these guys here? They're, they're horrible. And we were. <laughs> we didn't think so at the time. We thought we were, we were killing isn't that but great to be so naive? We were you so naive, man. You yes. we, if, if you knew, you would quit. and you go fucking work yeah. at the Oh, you would place. quit in yeah. a heartbeat if we knew. But, you know, other musicians would look at us, but the crowd loved us, man. They they would come in. entertaining, weren't we you? We entertained the shit out of them because I was, you know, we thought we were the greatest. Yeah. We thought we was Van Halen. My, our, the whole band was up there just jumping around and y'all shit. Y'all thought and, that you yeah. stacked up next to that band that just got through playing in front of y'all? No, we were in awe of them. We knew they were great and they were better than us, but we thought we were good. Right. We were horrible. You know, I got some cassette where, where tapes. Where are they at today? Yeah, good they question. <laughs> Hey, hey, fuck those guys. <laughs> Pieces of shit. <laughs> They're called the Bill Pygmies. It's the first night you Speaking met Speaking of the Velcro Pygmies, God dang it. Yeah. There's a reason I'm here. <laughs> the fucking reason I'm here. Let's so go. let me just set this shit up for you one time. So Lanham calls me up. Or we're texting <laughs> back and forth. And I don't know, maybe we're out talking or whatever. And so he's like, yeah, man, we're doing this new podcast. I'd like to get you down. It's, it's pretty cool. Check it out on YouTube. And he, so we got we had the, the, the pygmies on there, the last one. We just loaded it. Check it out. He said, you're briefly mentioned. Then he just scoots right into the next <laughs> subject. And I'm like, I'm like whoa, whoa. He ain't gonna just say that and then just breeze on past like, like. We you know, just wanted to give a shout out to John Stone. All yeah, right, now let's go. Yeah, so I know something's up. So I'm like, all right, I got to watch this now. So I popped it in. I'm traveling. I'm listening to this dead gun podcast. It was great. It was a great podcast. And then we get to the point where Cam. Uh, they uh, they ask Cam, "What's the worst gig you ever played? <laughs> What's the worst gig you ever played?" And he's like, "Oh man, there was so many, but there's this one. There's it was Scottsboro, Alabama." And he's like, "What was the name of that uh, that bar?" It's the, 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 the Phoenix. And he's like, "John Stone, yeah, John Stone. You remember that guy? He booked us at that bar. There was a place called the yeah. Phoenix. A place called the Phoenix where John Stone. Remember John Stone was oh, a yeah, house. I talked to him man. last week. I'm thinking." Holy shit. Is that true? Did you book him? That is very true. That's 100% true. The only truth. That's a, a, well, here, let me tell you the whole story Let's now. Let's now go. that I've been thrown under the bus, let me just back it up over me. Come on. And admit that I did book him at the club, but what was doing there is I played there. I had a residency there in uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I played there. And so I was kind of helping on Tuesday and Wednesday we did karaoke on Wednesday night. Tuesday night, we tried to set up a rock night. We were going to get some rock bands that, you know, uh, that probably didn't play on the weeknights to try to build that night up. So I tell the owner of the club, and let me stress this, Tracy, I'm not one of these that won't say names. <laughs> Tracy <laughs> from <laughs> Alabama. Tracy, if you're watching, and we know you are. <laughs> Tracy <laughs> from <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> what's that what's that phone number? <laughs> yeah. So he owned this club and so I told him I said, Man, you need to get the pygmies in here because coming up, the pygmies were what we all aspired to be. Yeah. You know, we all wanted to play that college circuit. We all wanted to have the line out the door and the the freaking five hundred smoking hot girls in our show. Right. And they were entertaining as hell. I mean so I said, you gotta get these dudes in here. So he said, All right. So I call up their booking agent. Was it Crescent Bill, Moon? Bill per year. Bill. Yeah. I called yeah. up Bill. Wow. We're talking. So I booked him. And I think it was like twenty five hundred bucks at the time, which is a lot of money on a Tuesday. And hell so yeah. On a Tuesday, I'll take it tomorrow. Yeah. Dude, this is, <laughs> dude, this was twenty two years ago. Yeah, you know, twenty three years That's ago. That's big money. And so, and so, we book it, and everything's great. Well, I'm out on the road because I played six nights a week just about my whole career. I mean, from about ninety five on. Out, only time I didn't play is when I chose not to. So I'm out on the road, and they come and play. Everything, from what I understand, was 
you know, didn't have a big crowd, but the guy, another one of those classic cases, didn't spend one dime in advertising or anything. Didn't do shit. Yeah, you know, of course. Didn't tell anybody they were coming. That's right. And then, so apparently. Preach. Go so, ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you, you know exactly what I'm in. talking I, about. I've been, I've been down that road one too many times. <laughs> they all do it. And then yeah. they want to complain about the band not drawing nobody. Oh, yeah. And so I think everything's fine. Well, apparently they didn't get paid. The guy oh. didn't pay them. Tracy. Oh. <laughs> didn't pay him, and so this goes on, man. I, you know, I don't think nothing about it. So about a year, maybe two years later, I call Crescent Moon up and reach out to Bill, and because I'm trying to get into that circuit, and I'm like, man, I'd like to talk to you guys about, you know, uh, representing us, booking their band or whatever. And he said, Yeah, man, we never did get paid for that gig in Scottsboro. You booked the Pygmies at. Oh, I said, What? He said, yeah, we never got paid on that. And, no, no, uh, the part where you said your, your yeah. gig. What are you talking about? My <laughs> yeah. gig? And, and, uh, and, well, I am the one that talked to Bill. I am the one that booked the thing. And, and so I was on the hook for it. And I said, give me about an hour. So I called Tracy up. And How I said, long hey, ago is this after the gig? A year or two. Oh, my God. A fucking geez. year or two after That's the crazy. gig. crazy. I didn't know anything about oh, them not getting geez. paid. So apparently Bill or the or – the, uh, uh, the, agency just went ahead and paid their band yeah and they ate it you mm -hmm. know since they booked so it, he's waiting on your damn phone go. which kudos <laughs> yeah. so kudos to bill you know yeah. what i'm saying for being stand-up yeah. guy and a stand-up agency for taking care of their artists yep. you know yep. i got I, that gave me mad respect for them folks that they went ahead right. and paid the bill and the band didn't go without so i said give me an hour so i called tracy and i said hey man did you fucking not pay the pygmies, when they were there, you know, when I booked them, when we were trying to do rock and out, hey, well, we didn't make no money. I said, I don't give a damn. You told, you know, yeah. we gave them my people our word. Yeah. You know, my word, my name is on this. And I said, uh, I said, I just talked to their agent trying to get them to do work for me. And they told me that you didn't even pay those guys. I said, you need to call him right now and get them paid. You send them a check right now. He did. And uh, Bill said, well, I just lost – this was when the flat screen TVs had just come out and they were so damn expensive. He said, well, I guess I got to buy so-and-so a new TV now. I bet them I'd never see that money. <laughs> and, but, you know, a year or two later, I got them that money, but I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know that they didn't get paid. No, And to Cam's credit, man, I saw him, you know, over the years, and this whole time he still thinks that I am probably didn't pay him. Because I don't know if Bill ever told him. You, maybe know, he you never brought it up to him. I never brought so it up to him. He's finding out right now. He's finding the, out right now. The true story. And, but to his credit, he never brought it up to me either. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He never throwed that shit in my face. or He was always just as nice to me whenever I'd run into him, man. And the dude never he forgot my face or name. Every time I'd walk in a bar, he would. He knew exactly who I was and stuff. And I was always in awe of his his stage presence and his command of an audience, man. Yep. And so, you know, I give him shit. I, I I figured I was I was wanted to spend the the next hour just ripping just him. ripping out his damn say, furry boots and spray tan and shit. But, <laughs> 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 but no, I love the dude, man. I, I've always I, I always I learned a lot from watching that cat coming up because we were right behind him. And like I said. You know, to do what he's done for 30 years and still be out there killing it. You yeah. know, I got a lot of mad respect for that. But I, I wanted him to know and everybody else to know that I'm not the douchebag in this story. Tracy is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, Tracy. you know, that's a guy that didn't pay him, not me. So, <laughs> but I, I did. talk about a woman the whole time. I hey, but he's I, like, all right, I'm going home. That's the end of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to get that fucking out there for everybody. But I did make sure they got paid, though, so. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I thought you were saying that Cam waited 20 years for, <laughs> to tell that story on this podcast. He's been bottling it up. <laughs> now, this now, hold now it makes me wonder where all else he did tell that shit <laughs> yeah. to, now, man. Yeah. Now, whose fault was this shit again? Tracy. Tracy. 
Alabama. That's what I thought you said. Damn. She's probably passed away. You're probably shitting on somebody that's passed away. If we were lucky. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds like you might have gotten stiff at that club. Now I never got stiff, man. I just ain't got no use for that dude. That's a whole nother podcast, though. Dude, tell me some stories. Buddy, this is the podcast. It sounds like this is what you your grievances to. First of all, nobody's paying attention. Just like 80 grand the last video. (laughs) It's just between us. Just wait. Just wait till I announce that I'm going to be on here. You'll get 10. (laughs) Well, now's a good time to to roll out our new T-shirts and say, Fuck Tracy. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's our new merch. John. <laughs> John, I wonder if John starts selling that kind of merch in the show. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me uh, some of the stories about you not getting paid. I'm sure there's been some promoters oh, that man. have stuck on it. I've got several stories like that. Well, um, no, no, more wait, interesting, wait. what have you done to get the money? Because I know that you're not a guy that's like, okay, no. that's well, fine. Well, here's what I was going to say. Give us a gig. Oh, man. Because as a comedian, we have a couple. But give us a gig that you got overpaid where you're like, boy, we robbed them on this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you a couple of those, too. But I got, I got one in particular because you probably played there, too. Uh, but I'm going to tell two others, and I'll make it quick. <laughs> The, you uh, make it quick uh, either, what I'm about to say, what are the, you doing? The Alabama Show home. Palace in uh, Anniston, Alabama. Oh my gosh! It used I to did be it. a, it used to be a, a just kick in place, and they used to have what was big it called again? Alabama Show Palace strip club across the street. Yep, strip club across I the did street. Comedy there. Yeah. And they used to have yeah. the big room, and then they had the Oak Room, and sometimes we'd play in the Oak Room. If they had a concert, would open up for them in the big room. Well, Jim was having trouble. This was toward the end, and and he couldn't pay us one night, so he had. Was that sh- the owner? Yeah. He owned both of them. He owned the strip yep, club. He did. Across the street, and he owned the show palace. He's passed God. away now, but he couldn't pay us one night, man. So we just loaded up his PA. I mean, he locked a 40 channel board. And, oh, yeah, it, was uh, a, it was a big old room, dude. Yeah, huge PA. So we just loaded his shit up. And we're in there taking down the snake and all. He said, What are you doing? I said, Well, we're getting paid somewhere. And he said, All right, then. He, he, said, just, he said, just go and take it. He didn't have the money to pay us. So he said, just go on and take it. And at that time, it pr- couldn't have been $600. That board probably cost 3000 at you know, when it was bought yeah. new and shit. But, and then I played a club in Chattanooga, and uh, I booked a club on like a Wednesday or Thursday. And this fuck stick. <laughs> you know, we drive all the way to Chattanooga, man, and we got to be in Milledgeville, the, Georgia, the next day. And we get there and tells us, "Well, we can't pay y'all. We're 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 not going to have a band tonight." Or, or he said, uh, "We've canceled the gig." I said, "Well, that's fine. Just pay me." And uh, and he said, uh, "No, we we can't pay you. We're we canceling the gig." I said, "Well, you should have done that shit two weeks ago." But, <laughs> you know, we're here. We're here. Yeah. I yeah. said, "I want my money." And uh, or I want to play, but I'm getting paid one way or the other. And he said, "Well, let me go talk to my mama." <laughs> I'm not making you this knew up. You were oh, I knew I was like, <laughs> and he comes back down the street. And mama said, I, "I can't pay y'all," and so I I gave him the cussing of his life, just hoping, you know, it would scare him to death. Well, no, I wanted him to bow up. I when I was pissed, I was yeah. pissed. So on my way out, I grabbed this bar stool and chunked it through that big mirror behind the. I know. <laughs> We, were, it was, we walked out on the Jesus. patio, and there were some steel chairs there, and I grabbed one, chunked it through his big plate glass window in his bar, and I stepped out in the middle of the, middle of the street, and his bouncer come out there woofing, and uh, I told him, I said, just come on out here, because I mean, I was ready to roll at the time. <laughs> and God dang, then all of a sudden, we start hearing sirens just all over Chattanooga, and we go over there and jump in the truck, and... We got a we got a freaking trailer behind us and you know we got full PA and shit in there yeah and there's four or five of us in the truck and uh, we're trying to get out of this parking lot and the way we come in was way on the other side and then there's a barricade here and my buddy's driving I said just fucking run through it and I got a brand new truck at the time I said <laughs> oh. we busted right through that shit and went on down to got in downtown Chattanooga and pulled off and kind of put our uh, Put our damn truck behind some shit, went in there, start drinking beer. We saw cop cars going out. That's the Blues Brothers. Oh, damn. And the other one happened at the. Oh, God. Angela. Oh, God. She's Angela. Still- 
I just played there. Let me tell you yeah. what John Stone will do. He'll he'll drop a name. You damn right. <laughs> you damn right. I will. First and last. <laughs> so Angela on this back then, and this was twenty something years ago before I ever moved to Nashville. So we had a, a a deal with her. I used to I'd go play for the door, you know, and uh, and I didn't have a problem playing with for the door, right? You know, but I wanted all the door. That's right. You get the alcohol. I want the door, and I'm gonna put my person on the door. I count right. it. Yeah. Well, for some reason, maybe I compromised or whatever. Told her, okay, put your person on the door, but I want five bucks a head. And at the time, it was like three. That's what she was charging. I said, I want five bucks a head. And uh, so we go down and play the show. Place is packed. Had a good night. She pays me three dollars a head. And uh, I said, uh, Angela, we had a deal. You know. We we agreed on uh, five dollars a head. She said, "Yeah, well, I decided to just cut it down to oh. to three. I oh, said, "You okay. don't get to make that decision <laughs> right. after we've made a a, a deal." Yeah, yeah, we agreed. So she just basically said, "Tough shit." So the next day, I get a call. She said, uh, "Do you have my monitors?" I said, "Yeah, I do." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "I got every fucking one of them." I, I said, it. "I got every fucking one of them." She said, "Well." I want my monitors back. I said, I want my money you owe me too. And she said, well, bring my monitors back and I'll pay you. I said, fine. I went down there and got my money. I gave her her monitors back. <laughs> That's a good deal. I mean, dude, 17th floor, you remember that band? Oh, yeah, they, man. They would they would, uh, they would, would start pulling TVs off the wall. Even if you so much as gave them a check, they'd be like, no, 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 no. Well, if it's in the contract and you, that's what you agreed to, that's what you're supposed to do. That's right. You know, if uh, if I got a deal at five bucks, that's what I'm going to be expecting when I get done. Yeah. And and so I don't blame them, man. You know, and if and the thing of it is, too many, there's too many bitch ass musicians that'll just let that shit slide. Dude, they I ain't are, that guy. Most of them are. I'm not that guy. Me, you know, I never right. have been. Me either. Me either. Same thing in the comedy world. <clears throat> if, if you start letting them run over you, they're gonna run over you. And word travels fast. When word they, travels fast. When they fast. get a deal on you. If you say, hey, look, I'll give you this deal, but don't tell anybody. You're Mark. Don't no. even do that. Because the first thing they're going to do is call their other club friend owners and be like, I got these guys for this. Can hey, you believe it? You'll love this quick story. Uh, I played the Alabama Showcase <laughs> and with Scotty K. Do you remember that comedian? Uh-uh. He's an Alabama comedian as well. He, his big closer was he would uh, he would take his uh the clothes that he had on stage he'd take them off and he was in a hooters outfit <laughs> that was and his he, closer yeah oh he did a whole thing about how if dudes worked at hooters it's <laughs> a great bit scotty k shout out but me and him got booked at the showcase and so we we show up there and i'm like i mean you pull up it's a huge 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 place and nice i'm like bar. Boy, we're gonna pack them out tonight. Well, y'all get ready. We're <laughs> you, about to load up. You just assume it's gonna be full. Yeah. So, uh, well, the the the, no, the parking lot slammed. Oh, is it? Yeah, we started eight o'clock, and I mean, I got there at seven thirty, and you couldn't find a park, and I'm like, man, we're about to tear Aniston up, son. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to tear them up, dude. <laughs> and, so we, I park about by the time Scotty gets there, and he goes, dude, can you believe this crowd? I was like, I can't believe it, man. This is gonna be. Because you just book it going, this is going to be a shit gig going in. Never heard of this place. Right. We're in Aniston. Let's just do it. So we walk in, and there is a, the hell, it might have been John Stone. <laughs> hey, jamming. Full country band. <laughs> Call me the fireman. And I mean, this place, and that's my name. And I'm, I'm I'm and I'm having a beer. And I'm like, well, I mean, we ain't playing here. We're probably like in a side room. I thought we're in the, <laughs> we're in the time room. And then... We walk up to the bar, and we're like, hey, we're comedians, we're for the show. And she's like, okay, cool, y'all want a drink? We're like, yeah, I'll take a beer. This is a fun deal. And she goes, y'all are going to go right when they take a break. And I went, wait, on that stage? And she goes, no, actually, there's a, you see that little stage on the dance floor? Y'all are going to stand on <laughs> Hey, it's got a pole in the middle. It's for girls to dance on. <laughs> and I went, we're going to perform on that? And she goes, yeah, just a couple more songs. So she does this. She start waving, and the band's like, they wrap up firemen. They're like, all right, we about to take a break, and the comedians are going to come up. They literally, the crowd, boo. <laughs> <laughs> Before you even start. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, God, I'm going to need a shot, too. I'm gonna need a shot. <laughs> so we're like, hey, what's the deal? And she goes, yeah, they just take a break till y'all are finished, and they come back up. And I'm like, this ain't going to be good, man. 
<laughs> we can't hold this room. And I go, how much How much time are we supposed to do? Because that's, you, you know, like a band. Uh -huh. We got a contract, and let's, what's our minimum time? And she goes, <laughs> hour and a half. And I go, what? I go, there's two of us. Is there another comic? She goes, no, no. <laughs> she goes, you, who's the opener? I said, me. She goes, you do 30, and he does an hour. And I said, well, this ain't, this ain't fucking HBO. <laughs> <laughs> this is Aniston. Like, and they just booed us before we even took the, the dancer stage over right. here. <laughs> and uh, so we, I go up there. They get finished. They're like, blah. And everybody's woo, and they're like, "All right, we'll be back whenever they're done." And so people know they just got to sit through us, right? So they got to start playing pool over there. <laughs> Dance floor clears out. Now we're in the middle of the stage. So I start doing my. I'm eating it, buddy. I am eating it, son. <laughs> <laughs> eating it. And I'm like, man, this. Is <laughs> and I keep looking at Scotty, the headliner, and I'm like, I keep looking at him, and I, I'm waiting because I told him, I said, give me when I hit 25 30. minutes. Yeah, give me the five minute light, right? <laughs> so I'm sitting there, and I do a joke. And look at him, and he goes, not even close. <laughs> You've been up there for 45 minutes already? <laughs> He's not even close. So I finally, I'm like, I was like, so how y'all feeling? They're like, we'll be better when the band gets on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hey, so I, I literally, I went, all right, I got one more. And some girl goes, about time. And I went, God, he's got an hour. Like, I'm yeah. like, there's Plus. another guy coming up. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad for me. And I got half the time he... So I'm like, all right, this is my last joke. And he's going, y'all oh, stretch. Stretch. I'm going, this is my last one. <laughs> this place is on fire. See, I, out so I did, I did my bit, my closer. Uh, crickets. <laughs> I go, they go, all right, that's my time. Now you get, all you got is another hour from the headliner. Somebody goes, God damn it. <laughs> so he comes on stage. And as he's coming, he goes, hey, he had. <laughs> we do the handshake where I bring him on stage. He hands me his car keys. He goes, crank my car up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, did, he, he does this thing, and he is bomb. I mean, nobody's paying attention. There's literally like three people paying attention. Yeah. So we get through. He wraps up. I did like, I, look, I go, how much time did I do? He goes, uh, 12. <laughs> no chance. That was an hour. He goes, that was 12. If I stretched. Right. And I go, all right. So he goes, oh, I go, well, sorry, bud. You got an hour and 15. Right. So he's up there and he just, I see him going to Hooters. Right. So he, hey, how, how soon in is he in hey, this Hooters uh, outfit? 18 minutes. <laughs> and he, I see him take the shirt off. He's got the little crop top Hooters. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that time everybody turns around just here what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> hey and so we rapped i said hey man we're he got off stage and he goes well, you know we're not getting paid right and i was like oh yeah zero chance i'm glad i got a beer and a shot yeah. I'm like, I hope they don't charge me for that so we go back up and we're like how are we supposed to get paid and she's like uh you got to go across the street he owns a strip club and we're like huh <laughs> and he's like yeah he owns a strip club so here's how he gets you. You walk across the street. They walk you all in. Walk to the back room. He pays you in one dollar bills. He goes, By the way, first round is free if y'all want to sit at the stage. Oh, like, get the money back out of you. All right, we're in. Fuck <laughs> <laughs> you spend your money. You're just like, man, we didn't die here. We're genius. Yeah, it's a genius. That's genius. But <laughs> hey, he never asked how many. He didn't. You know, he didn't care. He booked a gig. He didn't was, see you. Yeah. eat shit over there. No, he was over there doing the deal. But I, that's hilarious. I've, when everybody says, "What's your worst <clears throat> comedy gig?" That's it. That's funny that he pulled it up as his, one of the worst. Alabama <laughs> Show <game>. Palace. <laughs> what year was this? Oh, man. When I started playing, it had to have been around 95. Oh, shit. 95, yeah. I was probably. I played there for 95, 96, and then it shut down. Then it, it kind of reopened a few times, but it, it burnt down. It like plumbed to the ground there after Did a while, it? yeah. Jim died just a couple of years ago. Yeah. I mean, he was great to us. It he was, was good to us, too, man. He just was. It was at the end of that club's reign. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it made just like the Fuzzy Duck and Gadsden, you know, every, <laughs> it came to an end. I played there, too. And, uh, Did you play the Oasis? Yeah, I played the Oasis. Gary Stedham. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I sure that. did. 
That's I, where I'm from. So yeah, I played, all, I played all those bars, man. Gary was a good dude. He was good to me. And uh, But the Fuzzy Duck, man, for years, I tell you what exploded those big clubs like that is – in 1980, Urban Cowboy came out yeah. with John Travolta. And they had all – Charlie Daniels was in the movie and had all this great soundtrack, Johnny Lee, Looking for Love. That song was a smash. And then everybody went out and bought cowboy hats and boots and shit, and every bar in the United States was packed every night they opened. Bands were gangbuster. They were playing every night in every bar. And the freaking movie was about a dude – who rode in a rodeo on a mechanical bull. <laughs> on a fake-ass bull. But they just got so entranced by this movie, man, and all these super clubs just jumped up, you know, because they filmed it in Gillies out there in Texas. And, and then you had Billy Bob's, and then here comes the Fuzzy Duck, Alabama Show Palace, and there were just all these monster clubs. And for, shit, a decade, man, they were slammed. You could not get in them. They made millions Millions of like dollars. Like midweek, people would show up at it? <clears throat> oh, dude, six nights a week. Only Sunday was the day that they wasn't closed. And, and I was only called Alabama. You couldn't sell alcohol on yeah. Sunday. Mm-hmm. They damn but, sure would have if they'd have been allowed. <laughs> oh, that would have yeah. been open, trust me. And uh, <clears throat> then around 95, 96, man, they jacked up those DUI laws, you know, made it where they kept up with your offenses. And then the first offense was – ten thousand dollars you know after you paid attorneys and shit like that and then little small towns started figuring out how much money they can make off that yeah. shit son god dang they rained hell on people that was out trying to party scott and that was, was terrible about it the, one of the ago. worst towns i've ever played we i used to i used to give them cops hell they would come in and I would just terrorize them right there on the microphone. They fucking hated me. Dude, they would sit. They the hated me. Lot. They would sit across the street. From parking lots of clubs. And, just, and I would pull over there and cuss them out, make them roll the window down. I'd cuss them out. I'd pull right up to them. <laughs> they pulled me over nearly every time leaving that bar. And one time, I'm leaving the bar, man. And I knew not to drink. Like, if I had a few drinks, it would be, not I'd be done. Don't fuck I'd up. be done by... You know, 11 o'clock, I wouldn't have anything to drink after that. And so, because I knew what, what was going to happen. So I pull out, and across the street, there's a cop sitting there. And it was a female cop. So I go on. I lock my cruise control in at every, you know, speed zone I'm in. Yeah. And I had a new truck, factory tires, all that shit came from the factory. Nothing been changed on it. So I knew it was calibrated. So I get on up, you know, three or four turns down the road, and I meet this cop coming head on. And I'm going 55. Well, he zips in right behind me. He comes up there, and he said, uh, Mr. Stone, the reason I pulled you over, you was going 72 and a 55. I said, fuck, no, I was not. I said, I was not going 55. You ain't I, heard going, me. I wasn't going 72 and a 55. And he said, well, I clocked you at, uh, at uh, 70. I said, no, you didn't. I said, the reason you pulled me over is because of this female cop that's about to pull up behind us in less than 30 seconds. I know how to get that out of my mouth. Oh, bloop, bloop, bloop. Lights come on, and here she was right behind us. I said, that's why you pulled me over, because she watched me dr- leave the bar just a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm. I cussed them both out, and I said, this is about the 13th time y'all have stopped me. You've never caught me drinking. I've never been speeding. I said, I know how you some bitches are. And uh, I said, I'm fixing to go down and file a complaint on y'all for harassment. They got in the car and left. What's that? Mm-hmm. What's that lady cop's name now? <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could remember their dadgum names. <laughs> but man, I mean, I got stopped down in uh, Sneed, leaving my mom in law's house, headed back to Nashville, man. And this is on YouTube. This dude pulled me what? over. I put it on YouTube. I made my son video it, and he was scared to death. I bet. And uh, this cop, man, pulled me over. He had a car pulled over. And uh, before we got to him, my wife said, we got to go back. I left my makeup bag at Mama's. I said, no, you didn't. So I pulled down, and I said, look in the trunk, because she does it all the time. I forgot this, or I ain't got that. She's always got it, always. <laughs> and so she gets out, checks it. We got it. So I get back on the road and pull out and head on down the way. Well, as I'm passing this cop, he runs back to his car, and I thought, what the hell? He must have got a call. So I go on down the road, and uh, I'm on 278 there, and uh, there's no shoulder at all. All of a sudden, blue lights come on, and I look down. I'm going about 65 and a 55, and I thought, God, how stupid. 
how stupid. I just saw that cop pull out, and now I'm speeding. I just got absent-minded. So I put on my flashers, let him know, I see you, dude. And there's nowhere to pull over. Finally, he whips on a siren, so I just stop in the middle of the road. He comes up there, and uh, he said, the reason I pulled you over is because you uh, turned around in that parking lot. And I said, was that illegal? He said, no, but it's highly suspicious. And I said, well, I knew I had him right there. He couldn't write me a ticket for anything. That's, That's a right. legal, illegal stop. Right. One hundred percent. What's the ticket? For? Can't do shit. So I figure he's gonna go back there and run my driver's license. You know, see if I got any warrants or whatever. He comes back up there with a fucking ticket for driving on a suspended license for a DUI in '95. First of all, my license ain't <laughs> suspended. Hadn't been. I've never had a DUI in my entire life. Never. Not one time. And I said, "You are full of shit, man." I said, <laughs> "I said I ain't, I'm not signing that." I said, I'm not signing that stupid-ass ticket. I said, I've never had a DUI in my entire life. I said, you call your dispatcher right now, and uh, I want to hear her read that back to you. You give her my number. And she did it. I said, that's bullshit. I said, I'm not signing that. I said, you call your supervisor down here right now. I said, I know what y'all are doing. I said, you're not roping me into coming back down here in this bullshit town. Town, yeah, paying tickets and shit. Well, what the, it was a scam that was running. They'd get people down there that didn't know any better and say, well, we're going to dismiss this ticket if you pay the court cost. Court cost, cost right. Uh -huh. And That's all they want. most people don't know no better, so they go in there and just hand out two or $300 on this court cost. Well, they tell them they've dismissed the ticket. Well, the, dis the damn ticket was illegal to start with. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, you can't just pull people over for no reason just because they look suspicious. That's illegal. Yeah. And if they'd have found a body in my trunk after that, he couldn't have charged me with it. It's illegal stop. We know what it's and like so, to feel black. <laughs> <laughs> we know what it's so, like. We, just drive, we drive through Albertville, too. <laughs> if any of y'all, if any of y'all think you have a man card after listening to John Stone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because I ain't ever looked at a cop and said, I ain't fucking signing shit. I, I, and I know people, people's like, yeah, I said that. So it's on YouTube. You can look it up. And I really? told him, it, it gets better. I told him, I said, you get your uh, supervisor down here right now. <laughs> I said, he you get him. A, he a Karen. Yeah, Karen. I'm I said, you get your supervisor down here right now. We ain't going nowhere. You get him down here right now. And he's finally like, I'm just going to tear this ticket up, Mr. Stone. I said, you get, I said, you ain't going nowhere. And he turned around and started walking back to the car. I'm hanging out the window. I said, you get your ass back here till I'm through with you. I said, you just wasted 30 minutes of mine and my family's time. What's it called? Cop versus John. I swear. I'm not lying, man. And, uh, and I told him, I said, you get your ass back here. You just wasted 30 minutes of mine and my family's life. You're not going anywhere till I'm no, done no. with you. Let's see what you said. Hold till on. I'm done with you. Till I'm done with you. Uh -huh. right, Dustin, run this shit. Yeah, let me hear it. <laughs> let me hear it. Oh, yeah. My driver's license ain't revoked. I want to hear this, too. He said you lost a DUI in my life. He said I had spend a lot, suspended license for a DUI I that never, I never got. I ain't never had a DUI in my life. All right, sir. Well, you need to check Tennessee, then, because they're coming back revoked, okay? No. Uh -oh. No, they're not. They, uh, ticket for driving while revoked? No, sir. You, you call that back in. I want to hear it. I, I don't believe that. I don't believe it for one second. I want you to get your supervisor out here. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. Oh, cut your Karen's ready to roll. Damn right. That's what we're going to start calling you. Cut your Karen's ready to roll. See your supervisor, man. There ain't no way you're giving me a ticket and I got to come back down here to this bullshit town for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's invalid to start with. Because turning around is not bullshit illegal. Town. I'm videotaping this, by the way. Hold this over here where you can get this cop's face. Tell me your name. What's your name, sir? Officer Randall, it's on ticket. Uh oh. Oh, I can see it in his face. No, I didn't. Oh, he knew he lost right then. Six thirty six days past. Here, repeat the information one more time for him, please. You uh, can see it in his eyes. Yeah, no, he's he's, he's defeated. Full of shit. God, a W for the common man, man. That's like, this is the best ever. Bullshit. I guess I'm gonna rip this ticket up. Uh oh. I pushed this guy out so bad he turned around and walked away. Got in his car and did a U-turn. Uh, I'm telling you, they're running a scam down there, dude. You know, I think the two cops across the street left when they seen you pull in. <laughs> 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 they ran your tag like, no, <laughs> they're like, uh, they're let's get the get fuck out of here. Because they know they're going to have to bring you in anyway. Like. <laughs> <laughs> now, man, I ain't. I ain't got disrespect for police. They got a tough job. But if I know I'm right, man, you're not yeah. going to run over me. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and if I'm wrong, I'm like, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try to get out of that ticket if exactly. I know I'm, I'm messing up. Well, good, good for you, I knew that was man. bullshit. Now, now, have you ever had this shit bite you in the ass? No. Never have. So I know it's so he's confident now going into traffic right. stops. Dude. Well, I mean, I know when I've messed up and I know when I haven't. And yeah. I know what a legal stop and an illegal stop is. If he would have pulled over right. and said, hey, man, I got you going 10 over, you would have been all right. Yeah, if he yeah. said, man, I followed you for a mile, you clocked you at doing like yeah. 61 right. or 66, I'd have said, you know. You got me. You know, I sure wish you wouldn't write me a ticket, but yeah. I understand. Yeah. You know. I'll suck your dick if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got a body cam on you, do you? <laughs> Can we work this out? <laughs> I know how my wife gets out of these. You mind if I try and shot? By the way, my name. Does this way, work for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> by the way, my name's Tracy. If you want to write me a <laughs> Yeah, dang, man. But, uh. You run into shit like that all the time, man. When you're when you're on the road as much as I am, and I know y'all run into shit like that. But it's just the stories and just places we've been over the years is crazy. Because I've been doing this professionally, I haven't punched the clock or worked an hourly since ninety six. Wow, ninety six. That's all I played music my you know, almost thirty years exclusively. When did you move to Nashville? Oh three. This is my. 20th year in Nashville playing on Broadway and uh, April 15th will be 20 years I've been there. Dude, I remember going <laughs> down Broadway when he was at Tootsie's with Jacob and Mark and we got up and he asked us if we wanted to, as soon as we walked in, we were like blown away that he knew who we were. And we were like, man, we're goddamn famous. Man, this guy knows it. You can't tell us shit. And he asked us if we wanted to get up and play. And I'm sure everybody was expecting us to play. Some kind of a hard rock song. We got up and played Boot Scoot and Boogie. And like, <laughs> <laughs> he was laying on the side of the stage just looking at us going, what in the fuck? Are they, how do they know this song? <laughs> <laughs> Shit, that had to have been 08 or 09 probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that was a while back. But I played for 16 years at Tootsie's Orchid Lounge, world famous Tootsie's Orchid Lounge. Yeah. And then they built Kid Rock's Bar down there. And then when it opened, I went down there and – and started playing down there. And that's the only stage in Nashville on Broadway, well, not in Nashville, but on Broadway that actually has a show stage. You really? in there and you look like you're in a concert. Yeah, yeah the rest of them are tiny. They're tiny. They're like two sheets they're of like plywood. They're like couch beside you. They're like <laughs> wide as a piece of plywood and two two pieces long. And they used to have a five piece band on that shit yeah. for years. That's why I can't hear now. <laughs> Damn little <laughs> bitty stages, man. But, yeah. you know, it was, it was, godsend for me at the time man how'd was, you get the gig how'd you even get <clears throat> like just moving up there most people have to sit around and hang around for a couple of years before somebody gives them a shot dude it was it was one of them leesburg gas station stories almost i'd been going to nashville since 94 95 but didn't live up there and just you know checking out going to tootsies and going to roberts and roberts uh uh, Don Kelly used to play there on Thursday nights, and he always had the best guitar players you've ever seen. I mean, legendary guitar players. Guthrie Trap, Red Volcar, Johnny Highland. I mean, these guys were just phenomenal players. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal players. And he always had a great guitar player, so we'd always go in there. And the whole band was great, but the, 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 the damn guitar players all went on to play with bigger acts. And so I'd go up there, man, and I got – Finally, in about 2001, when I saw the club scene around here dying in the early 2000s, and, and I knew it was going to be hard to make a living. When you say and around here, you mean North Alabama? Northeast Alabama, yeah, because yeah. I used to play around here seven days a week, and uh, I left my band in 01 and started doing just acoustic shows, and I, I was playing seven days a week, a couple shows a day on Saturday. And uh, I went up to the stage, and uh, I got booked up there. And I actually got the band Southern Flight. I don't know if y'all remember Southern Flight. They were huge in Northeast Southern Alabama, Flight. and uh, they were on the Pygmy scale. Just kind, of, they did country music and shit, but mainly did like Gunnersville and Milledgeville, Conyers, Georgia, and stuff like that. And uh, but they went up in and was my backing band. Well, I went and played for a year. I tried to get this dude at the stage to book me. He never would answer my phone calls. Wouldn't send me a uh, email. Nothing. And I'm a little kind of cat, man. You know, it, if I play somewhere, that's where I play. And so I went up there, and I said, I'm going to give this dude one more chance 
to talk to me. And if he don't, I'm going to find somewhere else to play. And I'd just gotten a divorce at the time. Me and my wife had been together for seven and a half years, got a divorce, didn't have no credit, nothing to my name, piece of shit car, just nothing, man. I didn't have no, right. no future, Start no reason, no starting. reason to stay anywhere, no reason to go anywhere. Just, and so I thought, what the hell? Why not now? And so I went up there. Of course, dude didn't respond to me, didn't get back to me. And so I went over to Tootsie's Orchid Lounge. It was a Wednesday night. Me and my pop was up there. And so this guy named Craig Curtis was playing. He was really good. We're still friends to this day. And so uh, we're sitting in the back back there toward the uh, the back of the room. And I said, if a man's going to play in Nashville, this is probably the spot to play. And so my pop said, go up there and see if he'll let you sit in. That's ballsy of so, you to try it right at the top bar in town, yeah. you know? That's, so, did you realize it was the top bar or you oh, just I got the it. feeling? Yeah. yeah, I knew it. I okay. mean, it's always been the number one honky tonk yeah, yeah, yeah. in the world. Yeah. And uh and so I went up there and gave the dude a ten dollar bill and at that time, twenty years ago, that was a, a good tip. They were getting they were making thirty, forty bucks a night in tips and uh for a four hour set. And so I gave him a ten dollar bill, he said yeah, man, get your ass up here. So I got up there and sang The Ride by David Allen Coe, and then they kept me up there, and I sang Trouble by uh, Travis Tritt. And I come off stage, there was a dude, we called him One-Armed Mac, and he used to work there at Tucci's, and, and uh, he got his arm blown off in Vietnam. Only one in his platoon survived this dadgum uh, uh, landmine and shit. And, uh, but we became great friends. He said, he said, you live in Nashville? And I didn't. I said, hell yeah, I do. <laughs> he said, you look at the play? I said, hell yes, I am. And so he said, well, give me your phone number. And he said, the music director's down in Florida. He probably You probably won't hear from him for about a week. This was on Wednesday. Thursday, I get a call, and it's John Taylor who books all the entertainment. And he's the brother of the owner there. And he runs all the entertainment there. I get a call on Thursday. He said, be in my office at 8 o'clock Friday morning. So he drove back from Florida. And uh, so I stayed and uh, came back Friday morning, let him listen to a few original songs. He said, can you, can you play tomorrow 12 to 2 in the back room with the house band? I said, sure, I'll stick around another day. <clears throat> so... I went back there and played for two hours, man. And within a week, they offered me a record deal on Tootsie's Records. And, really? Uh, I signed a deal with them, and they were my management team. And uh, we put out a an album. I had two charted songs and did radio tours and shit. Had, uh, I think my the top song that I had went to number 42. And, yeah. uh, and then I had a 49. We never did. We were right at the beginning of that independent label, you know, movement. Yeah. And the major label still had a cod lock on radio, man. I mean, yeah. I heard you talking it, it about it costs so much money to with go to the, radio. Uh, other podcasts I was listening to on the way down here with <clears throat> Trey. G- uh, no, Jess. Jess means. Yeah. yeah uh, I know it was Trey Lewis' yeah. podcast about how that payola. If y'all think that shit ain't still alive, oh, it is. I promise you. They got There's it. one thing that ain't changed in radio. Ain't changed first, a bit. First if you of all, look at, I'm in radio. It's not existent. <laughs> <laughs> hey Please isolate that. Clip. Good flex, man. Good flex. Yeah, Good flex. <laughs> Good flex, Cassio. <laughs> but I'm just telling you, if you if you don't believe me, look at the CMA awards and and tell me one artist that don't ain't on a major label. No, I mean no, it's that a major must label be showcase. Country music radio. It Not is. rock radio. Yeah, country music radio is what I'm talking about. Well, so dude. it was just tough getting in, but that lasted about four years, you know, and I finally we decided they were expanding their empire and building restaurants and bars and, and buying marinas and shit, and, and, you know, and so we just decided to be best. If they go on and did their thing, I did my thing, so we ended the contracts, and I just decided to keep playing there because I knew one thing. Yeah. Tucci's wasn't going anywhere. Correct. There was always a living to be made if I wanted to make a living playing. I didn't have to get a job. You knew that while you were out on tour eating shit. I, I knew nothing. that when I got right. there. Yeah. I'm like, you know, and I knew so many people that got signed to record deals out of Tucci's that you guys have never heard of. Oh, I'm sure. They played there. They got record deals on RCA. They got them on Sony. You never heard of them and you never will. No. They shelved but, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. They shelved them either to take them out of. To, to eliminate competition, the competition right mm-hmm. or they got them and it just didn't pan out or they 
they found another artist that was kind of the same style, but they liked better. They use them as a tax write off sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah, that's hundred percent. And uh, so, and at that time, with Tootsie's coming up as a record label, and us getting some radio play, and we were getting charted songs, they come in and sound like five or six people, right out of Tootsie's, and just psh, put them in the daggone filing cabinet. You weren't even special. They were just signing everybody that played there, right? I mean, right. he was not mm. the other five. Yeah, right. I didn't get, but <laughs> but RCA didn't sign me. I signed to the Tootsie's Orchid right. Lounge, and uh, but RCA came down and signed a bunch of people oh, out yeah, of Tootsie's, so to eliminate that competition, you know, to try to right. stymie our efforts, so to speak. Because all of them were so hungry, they didn't read a record deal. They just saw no, that they man. got offered one, and they were well, like, "Well, they think I got a record deal. I'm making. I'm gonna be on the radio. I'm gonna be a star." That yeah. used to be mm -hmm. the mantra that, that a lot of guys thought. Let me tell you, something, getting a record deal is easy. Easy. It's easy to get a record deal in Nashville. Hard part's keeping it. Yeah. It's selling tickets and, and getting your record played and actually having people like your music and shit. That's what, what calls the herd. And whatever you know. bad deal you sign, they got you for five albums. I mean, they ain't got you for one. They don't However long, go, man. What? However long's on that paper. Was that your first <laughs> album, Suck It? <laughs> <laughs> that was the ghost track, dude. <laughs> it's 17 minutes long. <laughs> dana, 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 suck it. Dana, dana, dana. <laughs> That's funny shit right there, man. <laughs> hey, gang. Thanks for tuning in for this episode. This episode was such a banger. I'm telling you, it went over two hours that we had to split it up. So this is the end of the first episode. Next Wednesday, we're going to release the second part of this episode. So make sure you like this one and tune in and see us next week. Girl, you get away with love.